What's up everybody, my name's Andy, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different here at KitGuru. With the rise in popularity of live streaming, we thought we'd show you how to get up and running. New creators, gamers, and more love the idea of starting their own streams, but just don't know where to start, and maybe have never even seen broadcasting software before. Now we're here to help, so stick around for KitGuru's beginner's guide to PC streaming. First of all, there are are two questions that you need to answer. Which service are you going to use? So for example, Twitch or YouTube or something else. And which broadcasting software are you going to use? You have a few main options here being XSplit, Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio, and there are a few more. Today we'll be using Twitch as it's the most used platform and we'll be using OBS Studio as it's also very widely used. Now don't worry if you're using something other than Twitch because everything I will show you will work with any that you choose. If you're using Streamlabs OBS, then this is almost identical to OBS Studio anyway, and the other ones are fairly similar, so you should be able to get by. To start streaming from your PC, you actually only need your PC and pretty much nothing else. But to make your stream more personally engaging for your potential viewers, then the best practice is to have a microphone and a webcam. This lets your viewers see your reactions, hear your opinions, and makes them want to engage in chat more, which could lead you to gain a follower or two. Any microphone will do, even your built-in headset microphone, but having a mic is more important than having a camera. If you're after a dedicated microphone, then that is best, and you can check out some of our mic reviews here on KitGuru. The same can be said for webcams. Any will do to start off with, but these can be upgraded over time, and some people even use full DSLR setups but that's beyond this video's intention. So you've got your PC, potentially a mic, a webcam, and a game in mind, but what next? I'm gonna take you through everything that you're gonna to need to know to get your stream ready and stable. First of all, you'll need to download the latest version of OBS Studio and check for updates. The first time you launch OBS, you will see an auto config wizard that will ask you to optimize for streaming or for recording. Click streaming and go ahead with that. These settings are often okay, but I'll be showing you how to manually change and tweak the settings to fine tune it. If you want to reopen the wizard, you can find it under the tools menu at the top. Before I explain the workspace, let's go ahead and get our settings right. Now these are the foundation that we'll build the rest of the stream on. I'll start by explaining resolution, FPS, and bitrate, as getting these wrong can end your stream before it's even began. Now before we set these settings, let me explain the three main things to get right, which is your bitrate, resolution, and frames per second. So bitrate is the amount of data uploaded and sent to a service, in our case Twitch. The higher the bitrate, the better the quality of your stream to a point, but there are some limitations. Not only does this take up more of your internet bandwidth, it can also make it harder for viewers to watch your stream if you're not a Twitch partner, and in some cases, a Twitch affiliate, as they'll need a capable download rate to view your stream if it's got a high bitrate. First off, run a speed test to check your upload speed, and your bitrate should be anywhere around 25-30% to lower than your upload speed. For non-Twitch affiliates and partners, I'd recommend not going above 4,500 and starting from anywhere between 3,000 to 3,500, but no lower than 2,500 if possible. And we'll be choosing around 3,000 here for our bitrate for the rest of the tutorial. Now we've got our bitrate, we need to understand how resolution and frame rate is affected by this. I can see you're thinking, yeah, I want 1080p, 60 FPS, and nothing less. Well, yeah, that is kind of the end goal for a lot of people, but only once you're already very established and have capable computing power, as well as being a Twitch partner, as they're granted more bitrate amongst other things. 1080p, 60 FPS, as an example, is a lot of data for your PC to encode whilst you're already playing the game to then send to Twitch. And even if your PC can manage it, then low bitrate would make the final image look terrible anyway with artifacts everywhere. Now for people starting out, I 100% recommend streaming at 720p. Not only will this be a lighter load on your PC, but it will also look a lot better at those lower bitrates. 
The difference between 720p and 1080p is more than double the number of pixels. So 720p has around a million pixels and 1080p has over 2 million pixels. Each pixel streamed at 720p at 3000 bitrate will be higher quality than each pixel streamed at 1080p with the same bitrate. Obviously this gives you less strain on your PC and better quality with a bitrate that viewers can comfortably watch on. So I'm sold. We now have our bitrate and resolution set. But what about FPS? This is a slightly controversial area and some might disagree, but my advice here is to stream at 30 FPS no matter what game you're playing. And I'm gonna tell you why. So just like the resolution explanation, if we spread 60 frames per second over our 3000 kilobytes per second bitrate, then you're going to get 50 per frame. Whereas if we spread the same amount over 30 frames per second, we're going to get 100 which is double the amount of data and quality per frame. Now this means that at 30 FPS, each frame displayed will be twice the quality and ultimately lead to a better viewing experience. At the end of the day, it's a balancing act between bitrate, resolution and FPS. Of course, you can tweak and test these as much as you like, but I think these are gonna be a great foundation to build from. Now let's go back to OBS and open the settings tab to input what we've just decided on and check out some of the settings that we want to use. I won't be explaining every single setting available in detail, but we'll just be looking at what is necessary to start streaming with good results. Under the stream tab, select your service, in our case that's Twitch, and either click connect account to log in or you can input a stream key. For any service you use, you will find your stream key in your account settings settings for your streaming service and never share these with anyone. Next, find your video tab. Now we want our base canvas resolution to be the native resolution of your monitor, which is in our case 1440p. Now underneath, we want to set our output scaled resolution to 720p, since that's what we decided on earlier. This setting dictates the resolution of your entire stream. So underneath that is a downscale filter. I recommend choosing Langsos, and finally, we set the FPS to 30 as we agreed on earlier. And remember to click apply at the bottom. Next, move to the output tab. And at the top, it probably says simple. Go ahead and change this to advanced. Under the streaming sub tab, we have a couple options to choose from to encode our stream. And we can choose either our CPU to do the heavy lifting by choosing X264, or if you have an NVIDIA compatible card, especially an RTX card, you can choose NVENC or NVENC, which I'll refer to as NVENC from now on. And this will make your graphics card take the load. Both can give excellent results. It just depends on how far you're really pushing these settings that we will go over and how good your PC is. If you have a top of the line system with a very powerful CPU, you can give X264 a go with high settings. If not, then most PCs will manage X264 with lower settings, and I definitely recommend using NVENC where possible. I'll explain X264 settings first, and then we'll go over NVENC. So make sure your encoder says X264, rate control to CBR, set your bitrate to 3000 as we agreed on earlier, set your keyframe interval to two, set profile to main, and finally we'll look at CPU usage preset. We have many options here, but really we're looking at between very fast and medium settings. Now these dictate the quality of the encoding with the slower the setting producing better quality, but much more strain and demand on your CPU because they're spending longer to encode. Instead, faster settings has less quality and less strain on your CPU as they're spending less time encoding. Since we're gaming and streaming from the same PC, I'd recommend trying out very fast to start with and maybe going down each rung, but this will vary depending on your system and how it copes. If you want to use NVENC, change the encoder from X264 to NVENC, set your bitrate to 3000, keyframe interval to two, and leave the rest as is. 
Under the preset tab, we have different options again, determining our quality. I'd recommend starting with the default settings here and change if necessary. Now here's a comparison between NVENC max quality and max performance. Now in my opinion, it's actually harder to see a difference here in quality. And if you can, I'd recommend choosing that NVENC, like I said earlier. In the audio tab, you want to set desktop audio to your preferred output settings so that the game audio can be heard on stream. And you can also add your microphone here under the mic slash aux audio tab. However, I usually add my microphone as a dedicated source that we'll be looking at next. So let's check out that workspace. You can see along the bottom, scenes, sources, audio mixer, scene transition, and controls are displayed there. I'd also advise to head to the view menu, docs, and enable stats. The scenes window lets you create different scenes to build on. For instance, scene one could be your intro screen where it's just your webcam so you can chat to your viewers before gaming. And then you can make a second scene for your gameplay and then a third for a be right back screen and so on. You can then jump between them whenever you want. And the scene transitions window lets you choose an animated transition to play when you move between each scene. The sources tab is where we will be mainly focusing here. This tab will let you add your webcam, your gameplay, your microphone overlays, and so much more. Click the plus button or right click and add source. Let's add game capture as this will only capture the game screen and it does use less resources than if you use display capture. Name your source if you like. I will leave it as default and click OK. Now choose how you'd like it to capture the image. And for me, I prefer leaving it on capture any full screen application. Leave the rest as is and click OK. Now let's add our webcam. So right click and add video capture device. Select your webcam from the drop down and click OK. And let's add our microphone. So in my case, I will be adding my webcam microphones as a separate audio device just for ease. So right click, add audio input capture, select your microphone and click OK. And now you'll see a new audio slider in the audio mixer for your microphone output. Finally, let's add an image to our overlay. So right click and add image. If your image is out of frame, then press Ctrl and F to center and to fit to screen size. Now you can move and resize your sources to however you'd like your scene to look on stream. Sources towards the top of the list will show above sources below them. Let's quickly make a starting screen. Go to the sources tab, right click and add. And now I'll add my overlay image, my existing webcam source and my microphone. And now you can click between scenes to transition between them, nice and easy. In the stats page, we can see our CPU usage, which is excellent if you do choose to encode with X264, as this will display any dropped frames the stream has due to encoding lag, rendering lag, or network related issues. And that's it, we're ready. When you want to start streaming, just click start streaming under the controls and press again to stop streaming. Now a good thing to do is make a second Twitch account and you can use this as a test account. And that way you can go live and make sure everything is working properly before going live on your official account. If you're experiencing issues, then it will most likely be down to either your bitrate being set too high or your encoder is struggling because you're asking too much from it. Go back over this guide and adjust accordingly. So how did you enjoy our beginner's guide to streaming? Please let us know down in the comments. There are many more options available to enhance your stream along with alerts, custom animations, and so much more. We will be making another guide on how to stream console gameplay correctly through your PC using the foundations that we have built here today. So stay tuned for that one. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, then please let us know and make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, turn notifications on, check our merchandise out down below. You can check us out on Twitter, but also don't forget to follow our website for daily tech news. I've been Andy, this is Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.